All right, banditos, gather around. Let me talk to you about a little human nuke I like to call Essimo. This guy, yeah, he was barely a blip on my radar until the devs hit him with not one, but two buffs. And let me tell you, he went from a walking caution sign to the go-to guy on my roster for these 400% infiltrations. Super fun. So why are you here? Because I'm about to show you how to turn this once forgotten fella into a certified nuclear bomb. Today, we're talking the best SEMO build to absolutely nuke those 400% infiltrations. Infinite ultra abilities, ridiculously fast cooldowns and damage numbers so high, you'll wonder if someone broke the game. So stick around because by the end of this video, you'll be laughing in the face of every room you nuke crispy clean. Yeah, you need this build in your life. But first, let me show you how this madness looks in action. Watch closely. See that ultra ability? Yeah, I'm spamming it over and over and it just obliterates everything. Landmines, time bombs. Yeah, I save those for the big boys. Otherwise, I just squeeze them in wherever I can. The rest of the time, it's full Duke nuke em. Let me slow it down so you can appreciate these numbers because honestly, they're just disrespectful. <laughs> Now, I know most of you are out there running Bunny or Freyna like there's no tomorrow, but today we're stepping out of that meta bubble and diving into what makes Essimo such a beast with the right build. So let's get into it. Time to break down this bad boy's mechanics and how you can melt through content with style. Here is a high level of what his loadout looks like. You could take your screenshot, but stick around because we got lots to talk about, including flex options. But since many people haven't broken out their SMO, let's go ahead and get into exactly what he does. So his first skill is called Time Bomb. It's a sticky bomb. The maximum stacks is five on this. And then stack cooldown is 3.8 seconds. And then the MP cost is 11. The burst damage is 439% times your skill power with a radius of nine meters up from three. All right, let's skip to his third one, which is called guided landmine. So once placed, the landmine flies to an enemy within its detection range and attaches to it. So the max stacks are three and the duration is 40 seconds on this. So it'll run its full 40 seconds until an enemy walks in its perimeter and then it'll go and stick to that dude. So you can only have three out there at a time. But with a radius of 30 meters, that's cool. The burst damage on this one is a lot higher than the stickies because you don't put as many of them out. So they've kind of compensated that way. More stickies, less burst damage per sticky. They add up to be sizable. With these, it's less guided landmines, but bigger burst damage. His number two is called blast, but it's basically his detonator. It's what controls the power increase. So the cooldown on this is basically nothing. The damage increase per bomb is at 35% and you can stack that up to 10 times. I mean, that's just nuts kind of damage. And so we do this on the heavies with a combination of the sticky bomb as well as the guided landmines. So we'll put out our three guided landmines and then load up that boss with as many stickies as possible. So let's go ahead and do a quick demonstration. I have five stickies and three guided. So let's go ahead and put our guided first and then load them up with stickies and then detonate. Ridiculous. Obviously he's immortal. So let me show you how each individually works. So let's look at the guided landmines. The radius is crazy. I mean, let me get way over here. I mean, look at the radius. I mean, that's an entire floor right there. It's just nuts. Okay, so I got three out. So that's your max stacks. Now, if I put a fourth one out, one of the other ones exploded, the one that was on him. Stacking aside, they'll just hang out here for 40 seconds and then they'll detonate unless an enemy walks within its own. And then you use your two to manually detonate them. All right, so that's how that works. Now the star of the show is called Creative Explosion and that's modified because of the mod. So let's take off the mod first so you can understand the fundamentals of this thing. It's called RK Explosion. So dashes forward to deal damage and inflict knockback on colliding targets during movement. So you can actually knock those big giant chungas on their butt. So interacting with the skill button again or ending movement deals burst damage. So you manually detonate. He is the new. So enemies hit by the explosion lose their buffs, which is a big deal. So that's why you want to make sure you hit even the heaviest bosses 
with your explosion. And then when the skill ends, grants self madness. Let's take a look at the stats. So the cooldown here at base, but it's gonna be different on the build, is 25 seconds. The MP cost is about 60. The movement speed increase amount is 120%. That's just ridiculous. Damage is, is skill power times 85%. It's really about the burst damage though. 7.4K, you're gonna to wanna to remember that number. Explosion damage range at 18 meters on this, and then max expandables at 200. So the madness has a duration of 14 seconds. And so you're gonna get a skill power increase of 25% and a firearm attack increase of 25%. You don't have any time to shoot your weapon. Movement speed increase amount is 30% when madness is on. You have two speed increases. One, when you're dashing, when you're actually using the RK explosion. And then afterwards, once you detonate, you're now into the madness mode and you're moving at 30% faster, which is pretty good. And then you're decreasing defense amount by 30% during madness. Now let's put on creative explosion. Great. Now he's got some other cool mods. They just reworked cluster a little bit, but we're not using that because the way this build is structured, it's all about his number four. It's all about his nuke. We're spamming it like crazy. Notice the base cooldown is now at 12.7 seconds. That's the biggest part of Creative Explosion. The second biggest detail is Narcissism. So everything works the same, it functions the same, but Narcissism gives you a 40% cooldown and that's what allows us to spam his number four, which to be honest, is his best skill and is what makes him valuable outside of the bosses. So for room clearing, it's all about his nukes. So let's look at that cooldown decrease. So 12.7 seconds there. So let's activate Narcissism. So now it's active, you can see me glowing. So I'm basically enhanced. And then if we look at our cooldowns here, four seconds, which is the minimum. So four second cooldown, you can't get any lower than that. So that's why we're running it is so that we can spam that. So there was a cost to this mod. So the damage has changed. Mostly we're looking at the burst damage. It went from 7,000 something to basically 5,000. They compensated by giving us a damage increase per bomb. So that's what Creative Explosion does. That's the creative part. So the damage increase is 4.4% per unused bomb is basically what it's saying there. And that's being applied to your burst damage on top of that figure. So if we look here, I got eight unused bombs. And so when I hit this guy, it consumes all of those bombs as part of that explosion. But now they're on a crazy quick cooldown, which is why that cooldown exists. We're exploiting that cooldown, not for these, but we're exploiting it so I can hit him again. So our goal is to always have narcissism active and there's a little narcissism icon. So just make sure you're maintaining that. So the sprinting is also really cool, but just make sure you always have narcissism up and you're gonna be able to have 30% more movement speed when that's on. So as far as the build, what I elected to do is basically load up on max damage and then cooldowns on top of that. And that's so we can spam that ability as well as our others. And then from there, it's about range. So you wanna maximize your range as much as possible. Starting with that, we got skill expansion and then maximized range. That'll cost a little bit of skill power modifier, but that's a drop in a bucket. The next important thing are the cooldowns. So I got nimble fingers for that as well as MP conversion. That's the cost to our MP. I don't like costing MP, but the skill cooldown is worth it but we're managing well with our MP. All right, next, let's look at his survivability mod. So I have increased HP. You're probably gonna wanna stick with this one. Then Battle of Stamina, which is giving me max HP of 122% and skill duration of 8.8%. So this is a flexible slot. You have lots of options you can put here. You can put in Spear and Shield for defensive skill power. You can put in mods to save you on cost. You can put a mod to give you more MP or even cap out your range, but we're really close to the cap, which is 24 meters. But this is giving me a double benefit and that skill duration actually translates to skill cooldown with him. And how that works is because of narcissism. So narcissism is giving us an incredible cooldown decrease of 40%. So the longer you have narcissism active, the more you're benefiting from that cooldown decrease. So this is giving me the tankiness, but also the duration, which is giving me 1.2 seconds more of narcissism, which is 1.2 seconds more of incredible cooldowns. And it's sort of a vicious cycle because you're using that to activate narcissism again, and then to maintain it. So you don't want too much duration, but you want enough to benefit that vicious circle. He comes out pretty tanky with this setup. So he's at just shy of 21,000 HP and not much of defense or anything else, but he can clear the room in a single hit. 
So it just ends all of that. You know, a dead enemy is not shooting him, basically. And you just littered the floor with a bunch of consumables to pick up your health bar. All right, let's transition into his damage mod. So we got four core damage mods here. You basically want to roll into fire and tech because that's what we're using for damage. So on the tech front, I got focus on tech because I do want the cooldown. And then we get the tech skill power modifier at 68.2. And then tech amplification, which is one of the new mods. You want to take that slot up with this one. Fire amplification is fire skill power plus 65%, which is pretty nice. Also a freebie because it's under the strike category. So you're going to want to take advantage of that one. But this one, yeah, this one you want power increase. Now this is an interesting one. And this one is not that obvious. So we still have another fire mod or two that we can take advantage of. So we have fire specialists at 81%, focus on fire at 77% and cool down. So that's a good one. This fire synctium, which is just a little bonus amount. So that one's sort of off the table. So there's another one that's fire master, which is kind of a split between skill power and fire skill power. I don't think I don't have one of those um, maxed out, but I can assure you it doesn't come out as much damage as power increase. Let me just give you a quick demonstration between power increase and fire specialist, because that's 81.2% of fire skill power. As you can see, we have different buckets of power in the form of standard skill power and then modifiers or elemental skill power. So you got three buckets there, basically. That's why you heard me mention, like, we lost some modified damage, but we didn't care. I said drop in the bucket because look at his burst damage. His modifier is 4,948%. That's ridiculous. So losing 20, 20 points on that is nothing. What was that? The MP conversion? No, it was maximized range. So we lost 20% skill power modifier. That's just a drop in the bucket. It literally is. So the opposite is also true. So to add 20% skill power modifier to that is also a drop in the bucket and wouldn't mean that much. Just so you know, this is just for base damage comparison. So I'm going to take off the secret garden so we don't have that tech variable there. So let's just hit him with our basic skill and it's 175. That's with this power increase. So let's take that one off. These are both fire skill power, not modifiers. Notice that. So this one is the greater one. So let's just go ahead and use that. You would think this would come out stronger. It's got basically 20 more points on it. So let's hit him with that. And it's 149. So or about 30,000 less, give or take. So that's just a quick demo. So power increase is what you want to do there. Now, there are reasons why you wouldn't run power increase. So you could run focus on fire and then lose MP conversion and kind of play in the middle. It's not as much damage, but we save ourselves some MP and open up another slot where we could put another damage one there, like iron defense or something, right? So, but let's just see what that does to our number four, because the idea here is, look, notice our cooldown is now 25 seconds, where I think it was 12 before. So we want to hit the cap of four seconds so let's see if that happens. It doesn't, it's nine seconds. So five seconds greater to wait to use our creative explosion, our nuke, and that's what this build is built around. That's why we end up fully loading up our cooldowns. And then the benefit of that is we also fully load up on our damage. And also because of that, this ends up being best in slot there. That being said, there are several different ways to make this build. You can go in circles for days on this keep that in mind like the quality of life or utility ads you can make to this build will spin you in circles what i recommend is start with your core power elements here and then the one that's gonna have you spinning is whether to run power increase or not to run power increase and that's all about are you happy with your cooldowns because the purpose of this build is to have infinite nukes then that was the deciding factor on this setup and why power increase ended up being best in slot as well as MP conversion, which means you're activating narcissism a lot. Now you can't refresh it. Refreshing it would mean that when narcissism is active, you can use narcissism again, and it'll reset your timer. So let's activate it. So there's our narcissism symbol, right? And look at the cooldown, it's crazy, but we're gonna use it again. And notice we're on the same timer. So we're still under the same narcissism. So mana aside, let's see how many creative explosions we can get under a single activation of narcissism. All right, so there's one, two, three, almost four. And that's why duration matters, because you're getting your creative explosion at a 40% decrease or at its minimum cooldown of four seconds. 
And in that 15.2 second duration, we can almost get four creative explosions in. Just crazy. And finally, another really good option actually is maximize conservation. This way you just don't have to worry about your mana at all. And that loss of skill power is just a drop in the bucket. So for the reactor, you're gonna want a secret garden mounting. Now there, there's an update coming to reactors so you can have multiple weapons on your reactor. So stay tuned for that, that's at the end of the month. You're gonna want a burning mechanics reactor. So that's fire and tech. Those are the two elements you want to boost. And then at the bottom, I went with tech and fire skill power just to push those numbers up even further. Again, fire skill power boost ratio is probably not that important right now. So other great options there would be range, cooldown, because if you put cooldown here, you might be able to take cooldown off on one of your mods. Additional damage to Colossus if you're gonna take this into a lot of boss fights. And cost, probably. This is a really important weapon in this game if you haven't gotten it. Pest control is a big deal. It gives you more skill power that stacks. It is chance based, so it is best for descendants that can spam their abilities. So it works out really well for him. Plus, he just doesn't really have any time to shoot, so that makes it an even better weapon. For a backup, in case you do get into a shooting match, the Enduring Legacy is great because, you know, it's fire. As far as mods go, you can really go with whatever. Um, if you really want to mid max your damage, then the Slayer set is where you want to go because that skill power is at 26%. But there's also the skill cost and it matters with him and the skill cost because I didn't want to load up on a bunch of MP and conservation and we're sitting at a pretty good place, but you can get into dangerous levels where you're having to run around and scramble for mana on the ground. And although he can clear a room with a single nuke, they keep bringing giant hordes of spawns. So you want to be able to throw out multiple nukes. And those are costing you, what are they costing us? Like 80. So our mana bar is at 280 and our nuke is costing us 80. So, you know, so that's why I'm not using that one. Plus we're just, we're just hitting so hard. We really don't need to, but if you're looking to be a glass cannon against a Colossus, that's probably the way to go. There's a happy ground here and that's the volcanic set. So that's gonna give you an extra 6.2% fire skill power, which is another reason why we didn't have to use focus on fire or one of the fire elements on his descendant mods. So it's not a huge number, but it's something, but they're just really good mods because they come with high HP. So that's max HP at 646. And then you do want MP recovery in combat. That's really important, but more important is max MP. So at the very least get that. This is important. So max HP at 484, defense at 4,000, and then the MP recovery. Without MP recovery modifier, your MP suffers on just about any descendant. So make sure you have that on him so you don't run into those issues. And then otherwise, I'm going for HP here. So the invader ox power is really high in HP for the processor, same concept. So max shield and then item acquisition distance is nice. Looking at his stats, I got his range at 1.87, duration at 0.08. Cooldown is at 70%, but we're probably exceeding the max there, and I'm okay with that. Thank you for hanging out with me. My name is Tuxedo Bandito. That's Tito Bandito. One and only. And this was another episode of The First Descendant. If you found this video helpful, subscribe, like, and turn on notifications to ensure you don't miss out on the fantastic experiences waiting for you in The First Descendant. And if you like videos like this, check out the one I have recommended for you right here. If you have anything you want to see covered, be sure to let me know in the comments below. And thank you to all the channel members and donors who make everything possible. Tux Nation wouldn't be without you. When you buy or download anything for the first Descendant, be sure to use Tux's creator code to support the channel. Easy peasy. Follow me.